Democratic Party. And we're having a little free um, meeting here because we have the hey, higher widening students with us. So I want to first of all welcome the students. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, Ashley Tucker, for bringing our students with us. Oh, this is a way better. I can see you now. <laughs> and also, Okay, thank you for coming. And so I wanted to, um, uh, Ms. Tucker asked me to tell you a little bit about what, how the Democratic Party works. And so that's what I'm going to try to do. We are a county party, and each county, each of the 159 counties in Georgia, has the opportunity to have a Democratic Party of their own. And the way that they do that to form a party, to form a group, is they hold a caucus. And a caucus is everybody gets together who says that they're a Democrat, and they get together in their voting districts. Now, in Lowndes County, we have five voting districts. We have three um, that are go one in the north of the county, one in the middle, one in the south. And then we have two that go north and south. This way. So um, we have five districts plus what we elect our chairman. That's a county-wide, so there's really six different districts that we elect people into. So if all of you were divided up, you, you mostly would if you're a county hire, you live in District 2. So you would all sit around a table together, and you would talk amongst yourselves and decide who you thought you wanted to have represent you at the county party. And you would elect um, four from the district. So because we have six districts times four people each, we have 24 people on our county party. Our county party then, those 24 people elect their leadership. And I was elected to be the chairman to serve for 2013 and 2014. So it's a two year term. We have elected officers of the chairman, vice chairman for elections. And that's the person that takes care of our elections um, internally and externally, make sure that we're working with the Board of Elections correctly. Um, we have a Vice Chair for Membership who takes care of our membership roles and makes sure that um, people who have paid their dues are on the wall. We have a Vice Chairman for Qualifying. Qualifying is the part of the party that seeks out people to run for office. You might run for the Student Council and somebody asks you or you decide you want to do that yourself. Um, the same thing when people want to run for office in the county, um, we have somebody that seeks them out, and that's the qualifying chair. Then we also have a secretary who keeps our records and a treasurer. So that's the county party. Um, the state party is made up of elected people from each county, and that's based upon the population of the county. So in Lowndes County, we have about 110,000 people, and that entitles us to three state party members. And the same thing. Um, the county party members, those 24 people, then elect three people to be state party members. And they can be any Democrat from the county. They don't have to be on the committee. Then the state party has a convention each year, uh, not each year, each, uh, every year that has a governor's race, so that'll be next year. Um, where they all get together and uh, nominate the candidates that they want to have to run statewide. So there's several levels of the Democratic Party. There's the county part, there's the state part, and then there's the national part. And so each state had elects people. Uh, Georgia has six, six, six uh, committee members on the national party. And the way that that works is that the state party, all those members get together and then they elect people to represent us at the national level. So at each state, uh, at each stage of it, um, so at the county party level, any Democrat can come and vote in the caucus. And then once the committee at this county party level is elected, um, those people are run the county party and elect people to go to the state, and then all the state people elect people to go to the national level. So the mission, if you will, of the Democratic Party of Lowndes County is to identify and elect Democratic candidates. So we seek out and search for people who are supporting Democratic values and then work to elect those people. That's sort of what we do. And the Democratic values, sorry, 
they're saying, well, what are democratic values? Democrats believe that a free, high-quality public education should be available to every single school. Uh, Democrats believe that health care should be affordable and available to everyone. Free. <laughs> uh, Democrats believe that our environment, our world, we should take care of it and make sure that what we pass on to our children and grandchildren is in, in as good a condition or better than what we receive from our parents and grandparents. Um, Democrats believe that um, there should be equal justice under the law, that every single person, when they come and stand before the law, that they be treated equally. Shouldn't matter whether they're black or white, young or old, rich or poor, that everybody should be treated equally in the eyes of the law. So those are some basic democratic values that the Democratic Party is going to work to elect people who will support those values. There's my lecture. Now, are there any questions? Not a single question? Have you been to the Republican Party meeting yet? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Okay. Um, when you said that all our young are in the eyes of the law, uh -huh. did, did that, when you said young and old, is that the difference between juvenile and adult? Is that still different or is there a difference? Shouldn't. Oh, so your question is, should juveniles be treated under the law as adults? Um, good question. I hadn't really thought in that context. Um, personally, um, I know that uh, young people's brains are not as fully formed as adult brains, so I would personally say no, um, that there should be juvenile justice separate from adult justice, right. particularly in the incarceration phase. I mean, if we have a child that needs guidance, they need guidance, they don't need punishment, right. in, in my mind. Um, most important thing is that, you know, men and women are human beings and they have equal rights and that they should get the same amount of money if they do the same amount of the job. Um, that sort of. Any other questions? Where are we on time? Yeah, Not, I got. I have several minutes. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, so uh, I don't have an agenda here with me. So pardon me one moment while I get myself an agenda. Thank you. So the way that we um, run our meeting here is we have an agenda at the door, which you might have gotten when you came in. Um, and we have always a special governmental speaker who tells us about what their part of the government does. Um, we have minutes from each meeting, which tells the record. Um, and at the end of the year, we have to turn in our whole year's worth of financial records and all the minutes from our meetings to the state party. And that shows that we're a viable party that we've been meeting um, that we're doing our job down here. Um, so we have uh, different kinds of speakers. You could, if you came on another week, now tonight we have Solicitor General Justin Cabral, if you came on a different month, um, you would get to see a different part of, learn about a different part of the government. And I have to say that even though I'm the chairman of this organization, there's lots of things about the government that I don't know about, and that's one of the things that I really um, have been appreciative that different people have come to tell us about um, what it is that they do. Ms. Tucker, is there a question that I could answer? Something you want me to tell them that I haven't? Mm -hmm. What about your part? I mean, you're very, very great active. When did your activism start, and how did you get involved? Because that's what we're trying to teach them. Middle school is not looked at as, as an age that can really do anything. So we're trying to show different avenues for activism. So I guess personally, I mean, when did it okay. start reading? Um, well, I just was uh, telling Dr. Brad that when I was a young person, my parents took me down to register to vote when I was 18 years old. And um, I signed up to vote. And I grew up near Niagara Falls, New York. And in our area, we vote, it seemed like, almost every other month. 
in March we would vote for our local elected officials, and in uh, May we would vote for the school board, and in September we'd have the primary, and in November we'd have the regular election, and if we had a primary of some sort that was at the federal level, that was some other time. So we were always going to vote. I never missed. Um, my, my mom worked at the polls. You know, she was one of the people that worked at the polls and had to sign her name and go in the booth. I was a good voter. I didn't really become active until I came here to South Georgia. Well, I was a little bit active where I lived before, in Austin, Texas. But only because I wanted to sort of know what was happening, not because I wanted to be involved in it. When I moved here, I discovered that um, citizens were not paying any attention to the county commission. No one would go to the meeting. There'd be two people there, maybe. Um, the planning commission, which lays out the vision for how our community will be developed. Zero people went to that. Um, the industrial authority. If I'm not there, then all the other person that's there is maybe the newspaper reporter. Um, so I just thought, well, someone ought to be watching. And so I just started watching. I'm taking notes and writing them up. And decided I was doing my work. So I got a video camera. And now I take my video camera everywhere and I take videos. And then anybody can go and see the meeting um, and, and pay attention. Because I think it's really important that no matter what you're interested in, whether you're interested in school or pets or sports or whatever it is, there's some place for you to be involved in our community. Uh, and especially for young people, because young people have a point of view that old people like me don't have anymore. Uh, I'm not as energetic as I used to be. I'm certainly not as idealistic as I used to be. And, and young people bring that enthusiasm. So if you love something, no matter what it is, there's a part of our community that needs you to be involved. Um, the animal shelter is a government-run thing. We, put our tax dollars there to say that animals that are neglected and abused have a place to go, a shelter. Um, if you're interested in sports and what parks we might have next, then parks and recreation. Um, if you're a business, you go to college and you say, I'm going to be a business person, then you want to pay attention to the industrial authority, which helps to bring businesses to our community. Whatever interests you, there's some part of the government that you could be involved in. So go for it. Another question. All right. Now I'm sure we're on time. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. And is there a way that middle school kids can get in? Is there a way that middle school kids? Now, lots of things you have to be 18 to be appointed to a board or a guard. Um, but there's nothing that says that you can't go and observe or that you can't write a letter, um, a letter to the editor in the newspaper, right, where you might say, I'm concerned about whatever topic that concerns you, and write a letter to the newspaper. So there are lots of things that you can do, even though you might not be able to be appointed um, or to a board. Did you care, did you care anything about the government when you were our age, 14? Did I care about the government when I was 14? Yes and no. Um, yes, because the government provided to my family services that I was interested in. Um, I got fresh water. I knew that my wastewater went down the sink and out somewhere. Um, and they picked up the trash. I knew that those were things that the government did. Um, so, and those were things I was interested in. I liked having to be able to turn on the water and have it come out drinkable. So, um, was I interested in bigger politics? Well, maybe. My mother was sort of a, a news junkie in the 1960s and 70s, and I can remember carrying her on the TV outside while she painted the house. She, I climbed a high on the ladder, and she did the download parts while we watched um, the impeachment of President Nixon. And I'm going to say, uh, you know, carrying this thing around outside. So interesting because my mother was interested, and, and she paid attention to what was happening, um, and I did care about that. Yes, ma'am. Um, how does exactly the Vedasa chapter in the Democratic Party do you know, like these national like stats as far as you know like, elections or like national? How how do we work with the national party? Right. Okay. Well, so we have our three state um, representatives who elect our people to the national the the 
state par the county party can't actually give money or resources to federal candidates. That's in the um, state charter. It says we have to sort of be on our own and pay to, we pay attention to local elections. When a national candidate comes, um, what we can provide to them is the resources that we have available in terms of people. To say these are our best people, these are people that you might want to contact to come and help you. Um, we have our office open. We have an office here that's open every day. Um, so that people have a place to meet and to work. And when a national, like when President Obama had his campaign here, that campaign had a separate office where people came particularly to work on that campaign. Yes, sir. Um, what are some things that we as members can do to help better our government? Right to your elected official, I don't care who they are. Um, if you live in a high road, Go down to the Hanover City Council meetings. They meet on Thursdays at 7.30 on the first Thursday of the month and let them know that you're someday going to be a voter. Um, let them know that the issues that you're, you're concerned about. Write to Austin Scott and tell him, I'm a young person and I'm concerned about, and fill in the blank whatever the sentence is. Um, a letter to your elected official um, becomes part of the permanent record, if you will. Um, and they have to pay attention to it. They can't just ignore it. So write a letter, number one thing you can do. Okay, so now I'm going to call our meeting to order. Um, this is the December meeting of the Lawrence County Democratic Party. Thank you all for coming. Um, usually we begin our meeting, if you have an agenda, um, with a moment of silence. So if you would please stand, we would observe a moment of silence. Um, and our moment of silence today would be in recognition of those who serve the country, um, we have men and women across this nation, across the globe, who are not with their families during this holiday season, uh, who put themselves in harm's way, um, and we appreciate what it is that they do for our country. So if you would observe with me for those times. And the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, when you came in, you should have received um, an agenda and a copy of the minutes from the last meeting. Neglected to put it in a place where I brought it with me. Um, but here's basically the uh, financial report. Uh, at the end of last month, we had some small amount of money. What does it say on there? Um, and now we have some smaller amount of money. Um, but here's the good news: is that we paid the rent, and we paid the cable bill, and we paid all the bills that came in, which means we took in enough money during the month to pay our bills. Um, but we don't have a sort of a lot of money right now. So um, pretty soon it's going to be time to read up your dues, so if you'd like to prepay your 2014 dues, we'd be happy to accept them. Um, $25 for uh, individuals, $40 for families. Uh, if you want to make an additional donation um, to help the party get through this super important year, uh, we would be happy to accept them. Now, but several of them said that they were coming. Usually they drove away. 
So we will move on to our, our civics part of the night. Um, Justin Cabral was elected in 2012 as our Solicitor General. Previous to that, he had been appointed by the governor. So when that position became open, he was an appointee, and then at the end of that term, he was elected on his own. Um, I actually don't know what the Solicitor General does. Uh, you know, I went to a lot of, um, it, this is sort of embarrassing, right? I've been to a lot of candidate forums, and, and fellas stand up, men and women stand up and say, I'm the best person for this candidate because I have these following qualifications. So I know that Justin was a lawyer. I know that he was the Solicitor General a little bit ahead of his running for office. I really don't know what that office does. So there's probably a lot of other offices that we sort of know what the sheriff does. What do you have to be qualified to be the sheriff? Uh, the Solicitor General uh, is here today to tell us about his office. What does he do? Uh, why is it important to us? Um, Justin Cabral. <laughs> 